हेलो स्टूडेंट गुड मॉर्निंग आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन द क्लास ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल केमिस्ट्री फ्रेंड्स एस्टर्डे वी हैव स्टार्टेड द चैप्टर नंबर फोर सोप एंड डिटर्जेंट वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट अबाउट द चैप्टर सोप एंड डिटर्जेंट सोप एंड डिटर्जेंट आर द मॉलिक्यूल्स chemically we called as surface active agent and its name combinedly as a surfactant so surfactants are different types on the basis of their charge on its head group or polar group anionic surfactant cationic surfactant zwitterionic surfactant and non ionic surfactant now soap is one of the type of surfactant that is anionic surfactant or anionic surface active agent now let us see what is soap what is role of soap how we manufacture the soap by using a different petrochemicals or different chemicals like fats etc so let us see soap is an anionic surfactant and it is mostly used as a cleansing agent soap is principally called as sodium or potassium salt of higher fatty acids the fatty acids are oleic acid steric acid palmitic acid lauric acid linoleic acid and myristic acid there are n number of fatty acids are there fatty acids have a varying chain length that means hydrophobic chain length and the chain length alkyl chain length may be saturated or unsaturated unsaturated fatty acid gives a softer soap we can say soft soap with lower melting point in water and are less stable while soap prepared from saturated fatty acids are hard slowly soluble and have a good detergency soap is made by the action of hot caustic soda solution or action of hot caustic soda on fatty acids or fatty oils for example refined tallows and greases with simultaneous formation of glycerin and soap the reaction is called as saponification reaction so let us see the reaction this is a higher fatty acids or fat oils or ester we can say on hydrolysis with the sodium hydroxide or we can say a caustic soda this ester will be hydrolyzed to gives a glycerol that is polyhydroxyl alcohol plus a sodium salt of fatty acid this is called as soap or we can also use a potassium hydroxide so we get the potassium salt of fatty acid so this is called as soap the molecular structure of soap is made up of long chain alkyl hydrophobic group we also called as non polar obviously non polar tail hydrophilic polar head it's a functional group because of this it has polarity and affinity to the water so we commonly called as polar head which is made up of an anionic functional group because of this unique structure 
it shows a good activity adsorption and micelle formation and because of this it shows the cleaning action soap also contain several other additives such as germicide perfumes dyes to made a variety of soap so this is about soap so manufacturing of soap so these are the raw materials which will be used to manufacture the soap the main important raw material for soap is fats and other chemicals are caustic soda that is sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide etc so main source is fats so fats obtained from different sources natural and artificial sources or animal or plant sources so first is tallows tallows is the main fat used in the manufacture of soap it has low melting animal fats that means it is obtained from animal fats tallows alone is not used for the soap manufacture but it is mixed with some other oil such as coconut oil in order to increase a solubility of soap second greases so it is obtained from petrochemical so it is lower grade tallow it is obtained from smaller or domestic animals so it is also animal source that is greases next is vegetable oil or fats coconut oil palm oil lower grade olive oil castor oil cotton seed oil are the most commonly used oil for soap making and this is second important chemical so is alkali so the most commonly used alkali caustic soda or potash soda are used for the manufacture of soap near near about 12.5 to 14.5% of solution of caustic soda can be used potash also used for the hydrolysis of fats several other additives also needed to manufacture the soap to develop the variety of the soap that is large quantity of other inorganic organic additives are used in soap making process first is water softening agent that is the soap can also use in the hard water so because this if you add this additives it is sodium silicate sodium carbonate so this sodium silicate and sodium carbonate uh, form uh, uh, that is heavy metal that means calcium silicate is form and uh, zinc silicate may be formed or calcium carbonate may be formed and it may be precipitate out in the water and water make a soap so this is acts as a softening agent next is alcohol sugar or glycerol that is polyhydroxy alcohols which is used to make a transparent soap so this soap may be uh, used for the moisturizing purpose that means the skin will not be dry so this soap uh, generally used in winter season so there is specific application if we add this uh, uh, additives alcohol sugar or glycerol so we get a transparent soap third is antibacterial agent that is phenol cresol sometime we have some uh, uh, bacterial or fungal infection on the skin so we need the antibacterial soap uh, for the bathing so this agent phenol cresol these are the antibacterial agent that may be add into the um, uh, soap and that soap will be used as a medicated soap for the uh, antibacterial action or antifungal action fourth is some scents or perfumes are used in the manufacture of soap for example lavender lemon grass oil sandalwood oil etc so there are several additives which can be added 
during the manufacture of soap in order to get variety of soaps uh, accord, uh, according to requirement of the market or consumer. So, let us see the how soap is manufactured in your continuous process. So, uh, we already discussed about the raw material. So, this is main important that is fats, tallows, grease, vegetable oils and second important chemical that uh, we can use alkali for the hydrolysis purpose. So, zinc oxide is used as whitening agent. So, it is additives or some dyes, perfumes we can also use uh, in the manufacture of soap. So, let us see the what, which chemical reaction is going on during the formation of soap or we can say the saponification reaction. Let us see about the saponification reaction. In this reaction that fats is split or hydrolyzed to fatty acids. That means the first ester is hydrolyzed to give fatty acid and alcohols. So, fatty acids are separated from glycerin or glycerol and then are neutralized with a caustic soda. So, there will be two step process that is first is simple hydrolysis process. So, glyceryl palmate is the source of fats, glyceryl palmate. It is hydrolyzed by using uh, water in acidic or alkali medium. So, this ester will be hydrolyzed to give uh, acid, palmitic acid and glycerin or we can say glycerol. So, polyhydroxy alcohol and we get this fatty acid, 3 molecule of fatty acid or palmitic acid. In second step, this palmitic acid undergoes neutralized. This is acid, we can add the base. So, this is simple neutralization reaction. We get this salt and water. So, neutralization reaction. So, this is sodium salt of palmate. So, this is called as soap that is uh, C15. Uh, H31COO Na+. So, this is called as sodium palmate or we can say soap. So, this is neutralization reaction. Let us see the flow sheet diagram of a continuous process in different steps soap molecule will be manufactured from the uh, raw material. So, let us see this is about simple flow sheet diagram. If we see here the fats that is a basic source of uh, uh, oil or fats. So, this fats or ester is enter at this step. So, we mix the zinc oxide as a catalyst into the blended tank. So, it is one of the metallic tank here we can known as a blended tank. So, in this blended tank, here the steam is there, uh, steam is inside and outside. So, it steam exchange and it will blend, mix it this with catalyst. After this, this whole material goes to the hydrolyzer. This is hydrolyzer. It is a long tank in which here uh, there will be a steam is passing through the pipes and uh, temperature is increases. So, it is temperature about more than 250 degrees Celsius. So, here the lower fatty acid will be distilled out. So, here the flow of hot water. So, this uh, counter current with the hot water this ester uh, moves from bottom to top with their boiling point and from the top there will be the spray of hot water and by this process this ester will be hydrolyzed. So, this fatty acids moves to the flash tank. 
here goes to the heat exchanger here we decrease the temperature condensation process is taking place after that this whole material goes to the high vacuum tank here the higher fatty acids are move at the top of the vacuum tank and the higher fatty acid will be recover at the bottom for bottom recovery this fatty acid again condense and this is distill recovery that means the condensed fatty acid is recovered here by using a water so after recovery of this fatty acid next process is neutralization here we add a caustic soda this fatty acid here neutralize and we get after neutralization we get the soap that is a uh, sodium salt of fatty acid that is salt and water so this soap solution is again process out that is uh, concentrate water will be removed from this soap solution so here soap finishing we get a uh, jelly type liquids then after evaporation we get a soap bar or soap cake that means we remove the water from this uh, by evaporation process this jelly type liquid is again transferred to the hot fresher pump that means this liquid will be uh, goes into the hot fresher pump after that here is heat exchanger so it will be cooling process is start then it goes into the flag tank here the air cooling is there here the freezer so this uh, liquid soap that is uh, highly viscous liquid soap is continuously cooled by the air flow and then after cooling uh, this uh, jelly type soap or uh, highly viscous liquid then after cooling it gets solidified and then it is uh, cut by knives at different shape and size and after cutting the soap cake then it will be stamped and then wrapped with the wrapper for the uh, market so in this way the soap is uh, formed in a continuous process that means if we enter the fats it get hydrolyzed after hydrolysis so we get glycerin and fatty acid so fatty acid is recovered Uh, with the vacuum pump fractional distillation to recover the pure fatty acid and it get condensed and here the neutralization taking place after neutralization we get the soap this liquid soap is again uh, concentrated into the jelly type viscous soap and after cooling this viscous will be get solidified at freezer and then cut it with different shape and size and then stamp with their company logo and wrap wait in wrapper uh, for the market and or we can say a packing for the market so this is about the flow state diagram let us uh, see the the process actually so what happen in different stages of the continuous process in continuous process fats from animal or vegetable are degenerated under vacuum to prevent a darkening by the oxidation during the process that means the fats will be uh, degenerated that means purified uh, by uh, under vacuum because at higher temperature the fat may be oxidized and uh, some uh, darkening will be created so this process is done under vacuum so we are not able uh, will uh, inhibit the oxidation process the fats is blended with the catalyst zinc oxide and then heated with the steam in blended tank so catalyst and uh, degenerated fats uh, mix into blended tank the mixture of molten fat 
with the catalyst introduced in the at the bottom of hydrolyzer so this molten fats with catalyst goes into the hydrolyzer tank it is fitted with the steam coil for heating so in hydrolyzer there will be a steam coil for the heating purpose the temperature inside the hydrolyzer is 230 to 250 degrees celsius and it is under 40 to 50 atmospheric pressure that means temperature is also quite high and pressure is also quite high so hot water is introduced from the top of the tower so splitting of the fat taking place here by the counter current uh, of uh, hot water in the hydrolyzer so the aqueous space dissolve a uh, splitted glycerin after hydrolysis we get the glycerin and fatty acid so uh, this glycerin will be dissolved in the aqueous space and uh, fats is separated the liberated fatty acids are discharged from the top of hydrolyzer to the flash tank that means at the top of hydrolyzer the to recover fats will goes into the flash tank then the purification of fatty acid is achieved by high vacuum steel by a fractional distillation the high boiling long chain fatty acid is removed from the bottom of the steel and rectified low boiling fatty acid are recovered by a process of condensation the purification of fatty acid are pumped purified fatty acid are pumped into the neutralizer tank so here fitted with the high speed mixer the fatty acid are neutralized by a 50% of solution of caustic soda and the saponification reaction is going on after saponification we get the soap and water this soap is discharged at 150 degrees celsius into the slowly agitating blending tank so here we add a preservative that means color or germicides or perfumes different additives will be added into this soap or alcohol or sugar or glycerol so the net soap is then sent into finish line where it is converted into bar or flax or powder form so net soap contain is a final soap contain 0.002 to 0.1% of nawh is there so in which will not completely removed so 0.2 to 0.6% nacl that means uh, in the water we have we, we already use in that case chloride is there so chloride will be neutralized uh, to form a sodium chloride also that means uh, some amount of fraction of impurity of sodium chloride also there in the net soap and then 30% of water and the remaining uh, amount will be the sodium salt of fatty acids so we call it as soap the pressure on blended net soap increases at about 35 atmospheric so pressure will be increases on blended soap after addition of something and then temperature is kept to 100 degrees celsius the hot soap is released to flash tank at one atmospheric pressure so this hot uh, liquid soap is released to flash tank at uh, natural uh, atmospheric pressure that is one atmospheric pressure uh, here the partial drying is taking place the viscous pasty liquid or soap is then cooled about 65 degrees celsius by a air cooling or we can use a, as a freezer up to the 65 degrees celsius after that uh, the uh, cool soap at 65 degrees celsius it stamp with their uh, industrial logo uh, their uh, industry's logo and then after cooling uh, room temperature it is then wrapped in wrapper paper and it is thus ready for the consumer market or for the for sale so in this way the soap will be formed by a continuous process here we stop the lecture in next lecture we will uh, move to the cleaning action of the soap thank you